Who's the right channel? Right. Channel White. White and Forensipini. I read it right. I didn't think. Thanks, Carl. Okay, uh, let's start from the other side of the table this time. Uh, no, let's start. Yeah, let's start. So, uh, hi, I'm Shauna White. I'm your current clerk recorder assessor. I'd like to thank the Hayfork Chamber of Commerce for hosting uh, this event tonight, and all of you for taking the time out of your busy lives to meet your candidates and vote for the candidate that you feel will do the best job um, for you and your community. A little about me, my family moved to Trinity County in 1982. I married my husband, Greg, over 30 years ago, and uh, we're the successful business owners of white construction and roofing. We're the proud parents of two daughters who were born and raised in Trinity County. Uh, my career began with Trinity County 23 years ago as an account clerk one in the auditor controller's office. Through hard work and dedication, I am now your county clerk recorder assessor. Uh, I currently hold my uh, certified property tax appraiser certificate. I uh, am three courses away from my advanced certificate. I also hold a certificate for a recordable document examiner, and I've completed four courses towards my California Professional Elections Administration credential. I continue to attend annual conferences um, offered by the various associations uh, to keep me informed of any changes in laws and procedures. Since my appointment, I've done everything possible to, to protect the confidentiality of voters' information, uh, and I've met and I've run elections with honesty, integrity, and following all codes. Contrary to what's being said, I do follow st federal, state, and local codes. I don't make them up. A few other accomplish accomplishments I've had. I've increased the office hours um, from three hours a day to six hours a day. I've implemented the ability to examine um, official records electronically. Um, and with the assistance of the treasurer tax collector, we can now uh, collect fees with credit cards. A little bit about my team. I'm very proud of them and the customer service they provide. They are hardworking, knowledgeable individuals that make every attempt to ensure customers' needs are met. And this is proven by the uh, forms that are sent in and signed that, they, that, that the customers fill out and turn in. Um, I'd like to say, uh, close by saying I've dedicated the past 23 years to Trinity County and most importantly the last eight in this office. My experience has provided me the knowledge and understanding that ensures these departments run efficiently and with integrity. Although I may not be the best public speaker, I am the candidate with most knowledge and experience for this position. I look forward to continue serving you, and I appreciate your vote on June 5th. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Fern Zapini, and I live here in Hayfork. And I have spent the last 12 years fighting for our rights and freedoms. Our right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness is constantly being threatened by officials who believe that the people are not capable of governing their own lives. This needs to change and it needs to start at our elections. Making sure that our elections are honest is the first step to ensuring our liberty. The second step is to involve the public in every aspect of the electoral process from voting to observing elections to running for office, the people must participate and as our elections officer, it will be my mission to make sure these activities are easy to do and that more people participate in running our county and our country. Our assessments are too high and are in fact abnormal. Our poorest citizens are suffering because of this incorrect application of tax laws and are unable to find relief from the current assessor's office. My experience is unique as I have been politically active since I was 16 years old and I lobbied extensively at the state capitol for ranchers and farmers and I know how to make appointments with the legislators and uh, explain issues and so suggest solutions. That will be enabled me to be effective when laws that affect our voting and property rights come up. I have taken the appraisers course and upon being elected, can then take the exam for my appraiser certificate. I am also the youngest member on the California Eagle Forum Board of Directors, and I was also elected to help lead their election integrity committee. And I have served as an election integrity project observer for two election cycles. 
I will make a great elections officer because I love the electoral process. I want voter registration to be at an all-time high during my tenure. People need to participate in the electoral process because elections are the foundation of our republic and without them there will be no liberty. Some of my goals are the registration of all high school students that are old enough to vote and I hope to have an optional class so that they can learn about the electoral process and their rights as voters. I want to reopen our polling places because closing nearly all the polling places has added to the disenfranchisement of voters. I intend to follow the law which mandates that every voter receive a voter card that shows their name, address, and party affiliation so each voter can be sure it is all correct. Please join me in giving Trinity County back its prosperity by voting for me so that we can live our lives knowing that there are people who will fight for us and that we can fight for ourselves. Thank you. Good evening and thank you to the Hayfork Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event and for all of you for coming out tonight to participate. I'm Lisa Wright, and I'm here to ask you to make the right choice this election. You lived for nearly a decade under Board of Supervisor appointed clerk recorders assessors, and I believe it's time for you to have a choice and have someone elected to represent your interests. Who's Lisa Wright, you might ask? Maybe you have seen me around, maybe you haven't. Well, let me take you back with me to the third grade library day when I was searching out the next biography on an American president. I couldn't get enough. By the time I was in the sixth grade, I thought I was going to become the president. I've been enthralled with democracy since I was a child. In high school, I was walking door to door on cold November days, offering rides to the polls. Um, I went on from there to earn a bachelor's degree in political science and French. I have a master's degree in public administration. I was one of 200 selected that year following graduation uh, for the presidential management program. And there I went into the U.S. Department of Justice, the Executive Office for U.S. Trustees, where I helped roll out a self-funded program uh, that had investment authority. I was also trained at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in white-collar crime and fraud investigation, which has been a very useful tool in looking at this office. Home and community really pulled me back, and I later went on to become a controller at a college. I was an executive director of a chamber of commerce, and executive director of Economic Development Corporation, where really focused on expanding the tax base rather than riding on the backs of fixed income individuals by raising assessed valuations. We have the speech thing here. Uh, I later went on to private sector success, um, so spending about 15 years in the Oracle software world advising clients on um, software purchases um, as well as consulting. So in all, I've been in the workforce for over 30 years and have a wide variety of experience and credentials to bring to this office. Some of my goals include examining all the processes and procedures for adherence to state and county code. There's very little discretion that's really allowed under the law um, in the execution of the functions of this office, although there's been quite a bit of discretion taken. I want to review the customer service practices to ensure citizens' concerns are addressed promptly and in a professional, friendly manner. I'd like to establish an, a public outreach and involvement programs to better leverage volunteers wherever possible. I'd like to provide more information to citizens via trinitycounty.org, but also by going out to remote locations um, periodically and holding meetings and, and sessions for input. There were deficiencies found by the grand jury and the BOE, the Board of Equalization, that I believe need to be addressed publicly and immediately. I'd also like to examine the practice of raising assessed valuations annually and really look at better ways that we can protect our fixed income individuals. Also, that would include taking a closer look at discrepancies in assessed valuation of comparable properties that fall outside of Prop 13 protection. And I also want to analyze um, and the feasibility and public support for reopening polls in remote locations. I've heard that when I've been out around in the various districts. So why am I doing this, right? I have all this going on, I have all this education, I'm involved in business. I'm doing that for you because I really believe that you deserve better representation. I'm committed to protecting your rights, ensuring free and fair elections with transparency, not, not hiding things. 
I also believe in private property protection and equitable taxation. So I'm really running to serve you as a fair, honest, transparent office holder who remembers how much blood has been shed and continues to be shed to protect these very important rights that we all, um, that we all have. So I'm asking you tonight, I'm asking each of you to make the right choice this election and vote for Lisa Wright. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. We have a substantial pile of questions here. <clears throat> How can we make the, the voting easier, especially for people who have language barrier? That's a good question. Um, language barriers definitely come up in our area with the <coughs> multicultural um, nature of, of our citizenry. I do know that um, it would be very helpful, I believe, when we have um, predominant populations uh, of different ethnicities that we provide translators. I also know that the Secretary of State provides ballots in different languages, and that could be very helpful um, to our, our variety of, of population here. In the 2016 election, several um, Hmong individuals actually went to the elections office and, and tried to volunteer as poll workers to en enable them to help uh, their fellow countrymen uh, have an easier time voting at the polls because they realized that there was going to be an issue. Um, the elections office refused their help. I would not refuse their help. I would also uh, make every effort to have, um, oh. Oh, oh, okay, sorry. Um, every effort to have uh, uh, ballots in the, everybody's uh, languages, because I do know we have a few different languages here in Trinity County, and uh, I think that everybody should have equal access to things that they can read for themselves. So language requirements are issued by the Secretary of State's office. It's based on the census and what people are putting on their voter registration cards. Trinity County is an English-only county. Therefore, we um, offer English-only ballots. Um, Secretary of State does not offer ballots in multiple languages. It's up to the counties themselves with the requirements to issue those. Uh, in 2016, there was nobody who came in to ask if they could be a poll worker. And um, if you have a language um, issue, then you can also bring somebody with you to help you with your ballot. Um, they can go, can't go into the booth with you, but they can come with you and help you fill out your ballot or their sample ballot booklets um, that are sent home to you. You can use those to fill them out at home and come mark your ballot at the polls. Thank you. What are the functions of the clerk, recorder, assessor office? Well, um, the assessor is responsible for uh, determining the assessed value of taxable property in Trinity County. Uh, the clerk, uh, which includes the elections officer, is to run elections, register people to vote, and maintain voter registration files. Uh, the recorder files and pre preserves documents for land titles in Trinity County, as well as those having to do with liens on land. Uh, and in addition, the recorder issues marriage license, performs civil ceremonies, registers birth and death re records, and files fictitious business name statements. Um, that's a very complete answer. Thank you, Forenza. I really have nothing to add. <laughs> so the clerk recorder's office you, is where you could get your certified copies of your birth, death, and marriage certificates. It's where you would uh, file your license to get married. It is where births are registered. It's where deaths are registered. Um, it is also the office where you would record any document to put the public on notice that a transaction has happened with your land. Uh, the assessor's office is the office that assesses values on properties. It is the office that um, issues, I'm sorry. It is the office that sends the values to the uh, auditor's office so that they can then apply tax rates and they send it to the tax collector so they can collect taxes. The elections office is the office where you register to vote and we run all elections. Thank you. Next question. What is your current employment? If elected, will you continue this employment? Well, I wear a variety of hats. 
Um, I have a number of businesses. Uh, one is Clarence Consulting, LLC. Um, that's around the Oracle Consulting um, experience that I mentioned in my opening. Um, I also am the CEO of a new corporation we just formed in um, February. It's called Flora, and we're a business admin platform providing payroll, HR, uh, marketing. Um, also, we do licensing and permitting services with a focus on cannabis businesses and helping them enter the newly regulated market. Um, those are my two primary uh, areas that keep me very busy along with the campaign. Oh, what did I forget? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, my clearance consulting, that's actually um, something that I do as an independent contractor. And so I would be cutting back or cutting out really what I'm doing there. And then Flora, um, I have someone in line for acting CEO. And so I would need to hire more people, which is really exciting because we need that for the economic um, base expansion here. I am currently a rancher here in Hayfork. Um, and no, I will not be working full-time at the ranch anymore. In fact, I will probably have to move to Weaverville in order to devote the kind of time that this office requires. Um, I will probably come home on the weekends to help out, but uh, that's about it. Well, I'm the clerk recorder assessor, so if you elect me, I will continue doing that job. Thank you. <laughs> okay. How would Prop 8 affect my annual tax payment? Um, Prop 8 is a temporary reduction in your uh, taxes. Uh, that is, you can file if you feel that your property is um, worth less than what it's currently being valued at. And that um, is reevaluated every year from the time you file that Prop 8 um, form. And, uh, no, I think that's it. So a Prop 8 is something that you can file if you feel that your property taxes or your assessment is higher than the current market value. When you file that Prop 8, it's basically an informal appeal. When you file that with the office, then we look at other comparable properties and we'll reassess it accordingly if, if it uh, should be assessed for less. Uh, then it's looked at every year and it can go up um, each year but it can never go any higher than your factor base year value. Well, again, the opponents covered it quite well. It's not a subjective um, answer, but what I would advocate is that we promote that availability more to people so they understand that there is that option. So if they feel that the, the assessed value is way over the fair market value, they understand, and there's a simple process that they can take a look at how they could utilize this particular protection. Uh, next question. What is base year value? We had this last time. You know, I don't work in the office and I didn't plant the question, so I don't have that memorized, but basically that's what the base year where your assessed property valuation starts at. Uh, base year value is usually based on what you paid for your property, but not always. If, uh, if the properties around you that are of similar nature are something that are valued at a lower level or a higher level than what you paid for your property, for instance, if you bought your property during a bubble, you're not actually usually um, assessed for that bubble value. You're supposed to be assessed for something what your property is actually worth. So that's what base year value is. So base year value is a proposition. It's Prop 13. It was passed in 1976 and it was retro to 1975. It, it creates a base value of, any, of your property when there's a reappraisable transaction. So you sell your house, you have a base year value, and it's factored each year based on the, the CPI that's issued by the Board of Equalization, not issued by county assessors. So we are required to inflate it by that, um, factor, that factor. It can be no more than 2% a year. But so reappraisable transactions would be um, selling your property, building something, transferring it to another person. This question is directed to Forenza. Uh, county budgets are tight 
and you've cost the county over $95,000. Now you're asking the judge to make the county pay for your attorney as someone running for county office. Can't you see why that is wrong? So in the 2016 election, a minimum of 40 different elections laws were broken. In fact, the County Council and the Board of Supervisors continue to commit felonies to this day. I and all the other elections observers for tri have tried for years to get the elections officer to follow the laws, and the 2016 primary election was so illegal that I was forced to file an election contest to challenge its validity. It's still in the courts, and I was forced to take the challenge to the state appellate court because the providing judge, Judge Elizabeth Johnson, said I misinterpreted the election law, but I won a precedent case in the appellate court with all three judges concurring I was correct. My family has spent over $100,000 on this case in the past two years. I do not feel guilty. So there was a complaint to the Secretary of State's office in regards to the June 2016 election, and the letter that came back to the complainant was, uh, there was no evidence of criminal, criminal election code violations. Thanks for submitting your complaint. Unsigned. Okay, this one is uh, for Lisa and Forenza. Regarding the complaints of election fraud by Kay Graves and Mike Weir, are you aware that the State Elections Fraud Investigation Unit has concluded that there is no evidence of election code violations? If so, why do you continue to insinuate publicly that there are violations? I'll start with you. I have no knowledge of what they're referring to. Sorry. Okay. While I don't have specific knowledge to what um, uh, Mr. Fisher has uh, asked that question about. Um, in regards to my own election contest, um, the Secretary of State has actually been known to say, don't bring me anything about um, uh, fraud in elections. So that's why we're not getting anywhere from our state government. Thank you. Um, if a candidate runs for a school board position and has no competition, when do you as a registrar of voters appoint them to office in lieu of an election? Before election or after the election? I'm not familiar with the appointment of school board members. I don't know that that's a role of the court recorder assessor. Perhaps it is, but I'm not in that role and haven't seen that particular um, requirement, so I really can't comment. I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that question. I'm not sure it's pertinent. Um, if it is something that we do, um, I would assume that it would be after the election is held, just like any other appointment, um, because the space usually comes up after the election is over. Uh, the, the, you know, when you're elected to something, you don't take over the position the moment the election is over. You take it over in January, usually unless it's a special election to quickly fill up um, a vacant seat. The elections official does not appoint anybody in lieu of an election. The elections official certifies an election and sends um, information to the particular boards that have the jurisdiction over appointing uh, individuals to boards. Thank you. I'll just add, for those that you want to know, <clears throat> it's the Board of Supervisors that uh, makes those appointments. Uh, this is to, this is for Shanna. How will you ensure that voter ballots are safeguarded and do not go missing? Mrs. White, how were ballots lost, destroyed from 2016 general election and not preserved for 22 months? This is part of the frivolous lawsuit that's going on. There are no ballots that were lost or destroyed from 2016. They're safe kept in our storage area. Um, we do have procedures in place. We have locked cabinets that ballots are put in when they come in. 
when we receive them from our printing vendor, they go in a law cabinet. When they come in from the mail, from the vote by mail voters, they go in that cabinet. They come out for the apps board to process them. Um, so it's really hard to lose them. And as for them being destroyed or thrown away um, more than before the 22 months up is, is not true. Thank you. What is your view on the requirements of Proposition 93 on ballot measures? 39. 39. Yes. I do that all the time. I'm supposed to know. So Proposition 39 was actually approved by the voters to change the 55% uh, or change the 67% threshold for adopting school bond measures and lowering that to 55%. Um, there are several qualifications that also kick in in order to allow that lower 55% threshold. Um, that would include the, um, uh, the local school board has to, make a, has to vote by a two-thirds vote. Um, also, it needs to go on to a statewide primary or general election or a regularly scheduled local election or a statewide special election. So there's some certain qualifications to get that lower threshold. Um, everything is as Lisa said. Um, as long as all of those rules are being followed, I have no problem with something that the uh, public voted into place. So I'm pretty sure this question was put out there because of the uh, Measure J bond that, was, that you folks passed in the November election. There's a current lawsuit costing the county thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, but Friday hopefully will prevail and it'll be over with, with spending money. Um, there was a, it was a regular scheduled election. The voters passed it by 65%. Therefore, it was legally on a ballot. And um, hopefully, like I said, Friday it'll be over and the Mountain Valley Joint Unified School District can sell those bonds and fix the mold issues they have at Hayfork High School. Thank you. What is your view on the limitations that Prop 13 place on assessed valuation of property? Well, I personally love Prop 13. Um, I am a uh, big supporter of the state of Jefferson, so tax, uh, we are taxed enough already. Um, and Prop 13 prevents uh, the state or the county from uh, raising your taxes by uh, arbitrary amounts every year. The maximum amount that they can raise that tax is 2%, and if you do not have to use um, that entire 2% uh, in the raising every year. Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic law. I'm a great supporter of the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, which are the ones who put that through. Um, yeah, Proposition 13, I think, does provide some important protections. Um, one of the things that it did was it capped out the 1% rate that can be charged for your property taxes. Forenza mentioned the assessed valuation can't go up more than 2%. Um, there's reassessment under a change of ownership, uh, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, interestingly, there's also an initiative that's being considered now that may come up on an upcoming ballot that will change this a little bit. And what it will do is it will require that commercial properties that their um, assessed value is based on market value, which now they're protected under Prop 13 um, increases as well. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, Prop 13 was passed in 76 retro to 75, and it creates that base year value, that starting value. Prior to, to Prop 13, um, properties were reassessed every year, so they could go up drastically every year, but it put that cap on that property taxes will be increased based on the CPI, but no more than 2%. We don't have any choices to not apply the full CPI that's issued by this um, Board of Equalization as long as it's under the 2%. Thank you. I kind of touched on this one before, this coming from a slightly different point of view. <clears throat> How have or would you educate property owners on Prop 8 reassessment rights? Yeah, we did touch on that a little bit. I think that there should be more information available. I think you would just search it out now 
And I think people should be aware that you can challenge that assessed valuation if you feel that it's over the current market value. There's a process to do that, and it should be made easier and more education provided to our citizens. Well, I think the way to provide more education towards citizens is to have um, town halls uh, or um, post it onto the county website on how to use it, although I think it probably already has something up there. Maybe not enough instruction on it or on how to use it, but it's something. And um, so, yeah, uh, educating people is, I love educating people on their property rights and their voting rights, so it's right up my alley. It's a very good question. Um, there is on our website the form for your Prop 8, and you just complete that form, you bring it into the office with your reasons of what you feel your property value should be and uh, why you feel it should be that. And then it is com looked at with using other comparable properties, um, close in size, location as what you own, and then it could be reassessed or it could be denied, but it, it is looked at. So if it's reassessed, could it go up? Yeah. It could never go up more than your factor base year value. So it could go up each year. It is looked at each year. So let's say your property was assessed at $100,000. You did a Prop 8 and uh, it was proven that it was uh, should be assessed at 75000 the next year we look at it, and when we look at comparables, it could be eighty thousand. So then, yes, it would go up to eighty thousand. It could never go over that hundred thousand factored, though. Thanks. Uh, this one is addressed here to Shannon. What would you do if a candidate forgot to file a required nomination form in time to be placed on the ballot? Mrs. White, have you ever encountered this situation or backdate stamped? these type of documents. So there's stringent deadlines that you have to file your nomination papers. If you don't file them by that deadline, you're not a candidate. And no, I've never experienced one being turned in late, and I've never backdated anything. This one also is for you. <laughs> <laughs> what potential conflicts of interest are there for an assessor and his or her staff, Mrs. White, are there written procedures in place? So there are procedures for um, your own personal property. Appraisers cannot assess their own property. Another appraiser within the office has to assess that. There are procedures that that happens. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of the questions. So let's give these ladies a good hand. Want to continue with the sheriff corner right now, or do you want to take a stretch? Or yeah, let's stretch. Want to do a stretch? Okay, let's be back in five minutes. That's the